Welcome back to the Nanaimo Now channel. Moved to Vancouver Island, out of Saskatchewan, the coldest place in the world, I tell you, back in, well, about six years ago. And I thought, I'm living in paradise. We've got the ocean, we've got the mountains, we've got the cedar trees, we've got, like, I'm living in friggin' paradise, guys. And then I went to find a family doctor. There was none in sight. I couldn't, I, I searched under rocks. I searched along the beaches. I searched in the bush and in the mountains and in the interior of the island. I could not find a family doctor. Why is that? Why could I not find a family doctor? Well, I'll tell you, the system is broken. Seriously. I figured I was living in paradise, and I am living in paradise, but there's not, like, there's, there, there, there's not paradise in the healthcare system on Vancouver Island. For one thing, as I did, as my wife did, when we got older, we got the hell out of the coldest areas of the, of the country, and we moved to Vancouver Island because it's nice and warm in the wintertime. Everybody had the same idea, so there's a whole bunch of old people here. Taking up the time of the doctors, yes. But, see, that's not the problem. The problem is that most family doctors were 50 years and older. Or are 50 years and older. And they're retiring. They're, they're pulling the plug. They're saying, I've, I've made enough money. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm going golfing in Arizona. I have better things to do with my life than work like a dog till the day I die. Back in the olden days, when I was young, the doctors, they, they, they lived to 140 years old because I think that the doctor that I was using in Prince Albert, I think he's still practicing, if I'm not mistaken. He probably can't hear, see, or do anything, move, but he's still practicing. But the new doctors of today, that's not, that's not the way it is. You come out of medical school and you can be a family doctor, or you can be somebody that works in a walk-in clinic, or you can be a specialist, or you can be whatever you want. But see, family doctors in British Columbia, and I'm only talking about British Columbia now, they have a fee for service which means somebody walks into your office as a doctor, you get paid the same if you're dealing with a sore throat or somebody with leukemia. The sore throat, take two pills, call me in the morning, and away you go. The leukemia patient takes more time. Yeah, so as a family doctor, you're not gonna make as much money as somebody dealing with uh, a walk-in clinic or being a specialist or whatever it, it, it doesn't matter so why would why would you go this direction so you get a walk-in clinic bang, bang 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 lots of people going through there every day oh it's just freaking nuts and you're getting paid per per person rolling through it's like an assembly line it's like the factory a family doctor has this many people that I'm your family doctor, and if they don't get sick, you got dead times and whatever, go golfing this afternoon, don't book that afternoon. It's the old way of doing things. The new way of doing things is, isn't like that. Okay, well, that's fine. So, in BC, there's about 18, just over 18% of people don't have a family doctor. Good, good, good part about that is just over 70% do. So there, there's that light at the end of the tunnel where you might get a family doctor. There's this place online that you can put your name in and say, well, I want a family doctor. Me and my wife don't have a family doctor. Put your name in. You put it in, it's just like falls into the internet black hole or whatever. You never hear back from that. So, oh well. So rather than spout all of these numbers and whatever like like I was going to do but then I thought well I haven't had a physical for like eight years and so I called up a local clinic and I talked to this lady she's nice and she's very courteous kind and courteous and I said well I'd like to make an appointment to see a doctor she says do you have a family doctor I says no I don't 
she says, well, I'm sorry, we can't deal with you. Uh, you have to call this other line for people without family doctors. And they will give you an appointment, but it will be a doctor on a telephone talking to you. You can't have an in-person. Okay, well, that's fine. So being an old guy and knowing how things work with doctors back in the day, well, part of getting a physical is having a prostate exam and, you know, like, unless this doctor that's on the telephone has a really long finger, there's just no way that this is going to happen properly. Like, I got, a, I got an uncle, Uncle Don, sorry about that. Uh, his doctor, his family doctor that he'd seen since he was young and, and went through, he'd go for these prostate exams and his doctor got Parkinson's <laughs> disease, like seriously. So like he says, well, it just made the prostate exam more, more interesting. Well, so you, you grow a rapport with your family doctor, you be, he becomes your friend, he becomes your confidant, he becomes all of these things that you can't get in the health system right now. And this is sort of disturbing to somebody like me. And I would imagine to people like you out there, because you're probably going, if, if I've got this problem, you're probably going through the same things that, that I'm going through and my wife are going through at this time, trying to find a family doctor or trying to sort of maneuver through the healthcare system to get the best healthcare. See, it could be worse. We could be living in the United States where uh, you're looking at um, over a thousand American dollars. So 1,300 at this point with the exchange rate, 1,300 Canadian dollars per month for the worst healthcare insurance that you could buy, the bronze. Yeah. And uh, I think the deductible on that's about 8,500. American dollars, so you know, like about eleven thousand dollars Canadian per year. So you're you're into you're into them for maybe twenty five grand before your health insurance kicks in, and then the bronze, and that as I say, that's the cheapest one. Doesn't pay all of it. I think you you still have to pay like. 40 or 60%, I'm, I'm not quite sure about that, but here it's, it's free, you, you get to see a doctor for free, you get surgeries for free, all, all of these things, some pills and some chiropractor or whatever things aren't taken care of, but basically it's, a, it's universal health care. Tommy Douglas actually uh, was a politician here in Nanaimo, so, and I'm living in Nanaimo, so um, he would roll over in his grave, or he probably is, now seeing what's going on in the healthcare system in Canada at this point, because he was the grandfather of universal healthcare. Uh, where does it go from here? Well, as I say, I, I, I checked out on the phone, and you, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, and you can get an online thing. Well. As I was doing that, I asked the lady, I says, well, is there a walk-in clinic where I can go actually see a doctor? She says, oh yeah, there is. I said, where? Port Place. Okay, so Port Place downtown, and you go down there, and I, so I thought, good idea. She says, is that the only one? She says, yeah, that's the only one in a city of over 100,000 people. Only walk-in clinic, the only place where somebody that doesn't have a family doctor can walk in and see a doctor. Really? Okay, so that's fine. So, no, I get off the phone. I think, that's great. I'm going to run down there. I'm going to go see a family or a, go see a doctor. Closed. Closed? Closed. We don't have any doctors. We're, we're, we're closed because we don't have enough doctors. Okay, I'll back up to the talk with the lady again. And, because I'm going through this as, as it comes to my mind. Uh, so I said, okay, well, so that's the only walking clinic. She says, yes, but you might have more luck in dealing with going to Ladysmith, which is south of us, um, I don't know, 10 miles, or maybe more, 15 miles, or north of us in uh, Parksville, which is 10, 15 miles the other way. And why is that? Because of less population. Okay, so, 
you know, there are alternatives to dealing with it if you have uh, access to a vehicle and stuff like that. A lot of old people don't have access to vehicles, uh, don't drive anymore and stuff like that. So they're sort of stuck in the, the Nanaimo healthcare system. And uh, it's not just Nanaimo, it's not just Vancouver Island, it's not just BC, it's not just Western Canada, it's, it's the entire country. So we need to change this system. And, and that's basically why I'm doing this. Like, as I say, I do videos about picking clams. I do videos about uh, Lake Couch and Lake Massachi and running people down the river in tubes. And I do videos about the Freedom Convoys. I do videos about all of these different things. I do videos out there. I do videos in the studio. Um, there, there, there's a wide variety of videos that I do, but this one here is one of those ones that impacts my life, my wife's life, our health. So I do this video because I want you, I want to spur you to call an MP. I want to spur you to, uh, to complain about the healthcare system that you're receiving because you're not receiving. I talked to a lady down in Port Place. She's been here 12 years in Nanaimo and she still doesn't have a family doctor, an older lady. You know, um, how, how do we fix this? We change the system. We change the fee for pay system. We make it more available for the doctors to make more money being a family doctor, wanting to go into family practice rather than other practices, um, more nurse practitioners, more midwives, more professionals like pharmacists taking over the duties of doctors so that uh, more people can be seen uh, making it professional, making it something that it should be. And I think that the government should be the one spearheading something like this and making it happen rather than just being lethargic, sitting back on their asses pulling their paychecks and doing absolutely nothing for the people because we're not making them do it. So uh, for all of you people out there that don't have a family doctor, 18% of the population, if we all stood up and said, uh, we're pissed off with this, we want you to do something, and 18% uh, of the vote is really, really important. So remember, if you're a politician, and if you pick something like this up and say, well, I'm going to make sure that there's a family doctor for everybody and actually know how to follow through with it or a nurse practitioner or a midwife or making, you know, the system change it so it, so it works for me, my wife, the people out there, uh, then chances are you'll have a better chance of uh, being able to keep your job, get a job, be a politician, do your job. Um, and that's my, that's my rant for the day, guys. Uh, if you like it, subscribe to the channel. If you don't like it, subscribe to the channel. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, until next time, as always, peace out. Bye now.